The activity room in the croft is busy. Hello, can you hear us? Residents come and go for a smoke and tea. There are general distractions and background noises. Hello, Patricia. Uh, I'm not sure they can hear me. Lisa's voice is more authoritative than mine. She is generally having more success at being heard. Hi, Patricia. We, we, we wish that we could come and be in the home with you, but we're not allowed at the moment. So this is the next best thing. Hello, Betty. We've not met you before. It's a bit funny, isn't it, over the screen? Oh, God, it is. <laughs> I might go out for a smoke, Betty tells us. Other times we have technical trouble. Yeah, now we can see you. I thought you were dead. <laughs> The screen sometimes freezes, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's the weather. Despite the obstacles, we persevere, capturing the memories, some fading, of lives well lived. Their storytelling brims with an undisguised honesty that could level us younger ones. Time marches along, Margaret tells us. I'm at a good life. I'm gonna do it all in. We also find ourselves laughing a lot during the conversations. Patrick is one of the residents at the Croft. He has a wickedly dark sense of humour. At the end of a chat we have with him, he signs off with, We're all doomed, doomed, doomed. <laughs> Christy is a resident at the Croft. He tells us, I get on well, well with people, you know. Yeah. The whole thing is you only open my eyes in the morning. Give me the, give me the ability to help someone in the evening. That makes my day as well. I've asked for help and give time set to you. We talk about how he's coping with lockdown restrictions. It's not lockdown, it's, it's locked up now, you know. Technology has helped Christy throughout the pandemic. It's great the technology we have today, isn't it? Brilliant. Without Facebook, Zoom, WhatsApp, I don't think people could cope. He tells us. Yeah. When I got a phone for a couple of years ago, I hadn't got a clue, you know what I mean? But now I'm showing other people how to use the phone. You know, <laughs> right. Yeah, 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 I progress. But helping people out comes with its own challenges. Chrissy tells us how he'd helped to tune in a football game on the television. Here in the, in the home, they fixed the fellow's television and he had a heart attack now and I had a heart attack in the shop. So was a good friend, but in, a, lo a lovely man he was, you know. Respectable, sad. So I'm not fixing any more televisions. Music has been hugely important to the residents. Christy tells us about a musician who comes to sing to the residents of the craft. And there's a lot of things in uh, things for us, you know. We do it every second week, you know. He's in the day. All the people are in the day, you know. We all we have the dogs that you can up on the you know. Yeah, they're very good, you know. I asked Christy if he listens to music on the radio. Oh no, you two. I can put on a little half in the morning, you know. Trees came into the room to the barn and I explained the music. Who <laughs> told all that music I <laughs> that's how That's how we met the music, you know. We're playing this bit long. I know you got that music. The girl got out of a charity shop. It was open, handmade, full size, beautiful sound off it. It's fun with that. I, I, you know, get a few cards together. But I, I got one this and then we went on lockdown. The man couldn't come anymore. The guitar lessons are cancelled, but Christy's more than happy to go on singing his songs a cappella. You don't need to get the trash. It doesn't need voice. It should be sung from the heart. I was only 5% of my lung function left, so I'm on oxygen 24 7. I have a great voice for what I'm singing, and I don't know how that is, you know, when God got me this. I never sang a note before they came here. Now they can't stop me, you know. I'm right at the back of the morning singing. Christy treats us to a recital of Cliff Richard's Travelling Light. When he finishes, the room applauds. Oh, you like that? That means you have a seal in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Valentine tells us he joined the army after leaving the industrial school in Tralee. You have the smallest clay toy you have. You have cold dollar. You have to look at the pads now. You have to look like a soldier. We discovered this soldier's passion for reggae. Oh, mom. <laughs> You've got a long history with Bob Marley, don't you? Oh, yeah. Going back to Bob Marley's concerts in Dublin. Yeah, we got a concert, yeah. 
I want my knife tonight. Many guns. Work has played a huge part in the personal lives of the residents. We talk with Teresa. No, I left school when I was 14. Yeah, I worked in mountains. You worked there all your life? Mm -hmm. I can so well, that's quite nice. I'm sure you made lots of friends in there. Yeah. 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 Husband, oh, you met your husband there. Mm. When she's been married. 1962. Margaret, a resident at the Croft, tells us about her husband. Yes, Margaret. What did your husband do? Oh, he's an electrician. Okay. Electrician. And had a good job in the corporation. <laughs> you know the corporation. You don't say it down. Well known. Yeah. Now, don't ask me if he had. He had a job in it. I know that. Yes. But what he done, I don't know. Yes. Christy also worked for the corporation for a while and tells us about the many other jobs he worked at throughout his life. From messenger boy to window cleaner on Liberty Hall. He also used to deliver the coal from the boats that would arrive into the docklands. I work where you had a stand to get a job, you know, on a stable or a car, you know. And you didn't like it, never got a job. They got paid in the pubs that time, you know. They got paid in the pubs that were closed there. <laughs> They remember the compassion they experienced during childhood. Margaret grew up on Nicholas Street. My mother, she had five kids, five children. And I was the baby who involved the kids she had. The youngest. Yeah, she was all good. She was all good. It's a lovely thing to be able to say, isn't it? Oh yeah, I can say it. I'm well safe. She recalls raising her own children. I got a house in Germany, yeah. Then I had the kids. I had a lovely family. Oh, lovely. Every morning, I think. And I had a good life. Mm -hmm. good life. And I do it all again. I was young then. I wasn't like I am now. Good to see you, Margaret. Oh, thank you. Why don't you get a green day? Well, I don't know well. I don't know well. You did well. Maura is a resident at Hollybrook. She remembers the crib in the church in winter when she was a child. And her mother building up the fire for her father coming home from work. He worked in Guinness and would be frozen. The John Wayne Westerns made a big impression on Donal growing up. John Wayne, yeah. Are you a John Wayne fan? Yeah, the cowboy films. You like the cowboy films? Yeah. You like the guns and? Yeah, guns and caps. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get presents of the gun? Some of the relationships were pretty good. Yeah. Oh, did your, your family would bring them into you? Yeah. In the era of the new normal, we protect one another by staying away. A difficult notion to reconcile. Catherine, a resident at Hollybrook Lodge, is reminded of another time she had to distance herself from her family to protect them. She had to walk from Ballsbridge to Drum Condra to sleep one night. She was sick with scarlet fever highly contagious disease. Schools and churches were closed and she had to leave the house and her boys so not to infect them. Maura resides at Hollybrook Lodge and caught COVID-19 in the first wave. While she was recovering in Mercer's Institute for Successful Aging, her husband Stephen, who she looked after for many years, died from the virus. She tells us, I knew he was gone, but at the same time I couldn't believe it. She could not attend his funeral and a nurse sat with Maura to help her watch it on a tablet. She looks forward to being reunited with the rest of her family again. Maura was interviewed on TV for RT Investigates, Inside Ireland's COVID Battle. She tells us, you know, we had a wonderful life, just it ended disastrously. Afterwards, she received thousands of letters, cards, gifts, and notes of support from people all over Dublin and Ireland, wishing her well. She says, I would like to thank the people who sent me messages after I had the virus and appeared on television. To the people of Dublin, you're the kindest people I've ever known. While families must stay away from the nursing homes, there is a persistent fox that visits the garden of Hollybrook Lodge throughout the year. Christy tells us about the garden at the Croft. Loads, wood pigeon, mad holes, grey back crows, seagulls, no. It's a purple. Yeah, it's, no, it's like the zero for that. 
Moving into the winter months, apart from the predicted waves of infection, there are the familiar reassuring seasonal patterns visible from the windows. Falling leaves and the emergence of wild berries. Lately, the winter robin comes into the gardens. His visits are almost spiritual in their significance. When you saw a robin, it was a loved one coming back to earth to say hello, to say they were with you, tells Adrian. I love the red plants at Christmas. Yes, yes, the poncietas, says Marion. When the phones and tablets are turned off for the day and neither visitors nor trips outside are allowed, a resident's connection with the outside world is focused on the wildlife in the garden. Christy shares his thoughts. Uh, and the population of what will be here up there as well. Uh, the next card, you know, I'm going to plot for him to The friendly fellow in America, a Facebook, you know, he, he's, a, he's a pollinator. He has people to, to grow wild garden plants and all that and use native. He helps people to, to, to give a bare land over for the purpose and the bees and the grown wild, you know. He's into uh, hummingbirds also. And he knows everything about hummingbirds. In what has been an unsettling and isolating year for many, we are finding new ways to connect with each other. The residents of the Croft and Hollybrook Lodge are no different. Their life experiences show that they have the strength to endure the many struggles of life while appreciating the joys along the way. They continue to do so as they face into the winter months of COVID-19. A message pops up on the screen about our chat time limit. I don't know what that message was. Uh, I think it was just to do with the 40 minute limit and we don't have to abide by it because they're letting us carry on. So that's perfect. Yeah. No restrictions when I'm on. 